Hey, what's going on everybody? Robert Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And today's video is going to be on uh, some settings on Manga Studio. Uh, I had some people request, uh, they were trying to mess with this and, and I want to say this software specifically and weren't able to get like a nice thick to thin line. Uh, so I'm going to try to run through that real quick, uh, a couple of the settings and, you know, make sure that you got it right. Now, um, bear with me here. Um, what I'm going to do is, is probably go over two aspects of what could be causing the problem if you're not getting good thick to thin lines. Now, you know, people are, are always asking me when I'm doing this, what, you know, what pen, what setting. Um, keep in mind that, that I don't, I don't change the settings a whole lot in uh, most softwares. Um, once I get it, you know, where I like it, well, with Manga Studio, you actually don't have to adjust much. So I'm wondering if the problem that uh, the uh, the person uh, asking the question uh, is experiencing might not be Manga Studio, might be uh, the Wacom tablet settings. Depending on what tablet they're using, that software is going to be different. I can't really vouch for every software, but I can show you what I know with uh, with mine. So I typically use the G pin here, um, you know, and I vary the size by using the bracket keys, which I've talked about in other videos, and I just kind of size it up and down. Uh, you do have some settings over here where you can control, you know, opacity, the anti-aliasing, uh, or anti-aliasing. I, I don't know how it's said, but I'll say aliasing. Um, so what that does is that gives you a different uh, rougher edge or softened kind of blurred edge to the line. Uh, I keep it about here and I, you know, moderate and it looks real nice. Uh, stabilization, I don't mess with a whole lot. I actually want to get whatever I put down. I don't want uh, something that smooths the line for me. Um, within reason, I wouldn't mind a little bit of that, but uh, you don't want to handicap yourself either. You, you know, you want to make sure that you uh, you just get better and better with your hand-eye control, and you know, you don't want that leveraged out by something that's changing that, and it weakens your ability to uh, to you know just to get used to the tool. You know, because that's that's what a lot of people have to realize. You know, when they're sitting there going hey what brush do you use hey what setting and you know they're they're basically asking for this crystal ball or this like little leg up uh into you know making it easier it really doesn't work that way i mean there's don't get me wrong there's a little bit of the software issue that's part of it the technical aspect that might be blocking you just a hair a lot of this guys when when you see somebody that's really good it's just that they put the time in it's not there's no magic word open sesame nothing like that it's just you just got to do it you just got to put your time in and uh keep you know busting your jobs and and working hard and you'll you'll get it i mean it's not it's not unattainable to anybody you know to, and you know don't let people make you feel or feel yourself that oh well, that person's just more talented than me i can't get it now there, there's people that have uh figured out ways to put pens and pencils in their toes and do some pretty cool uh foot paintings out there i'm sure or something you know like you can overcome anything that's put in front of you as long as you free up your mind to believe that you can do it and just keep working hard. So there's my little spiel. I'm not going to, you know, get into some big, you know, motivational therapy here. Um, but, you know, I just don't like when people down themselves and they, you know, that's almost what they're doing when they're like, well, I can't get it. I've tried this. I've tried that. You know, you just got to keep trying. So the, uh, now the software here, back to that, and what, um, what may be holding it back a lot of times, I use a Wacom. I use uh, I bounce them back back and forth from a Wacom and Tools Five, little uh, I think it's a smaller medium tablet. I like that when I want to lean back and kind of just you know uh, change positions uh, from drawing hunched over on my Cintiq. I, I also use a a 22 uh, inch uh, Cintiq that I'm working on right now, and that's nice for the the feel that you're actually drawing on the surface, but here's the here's the other thing don't think that you gotta immediately get to something like that I worked my way up this and it's cool and all in a lot of ways that smaller tablet that was just a few hundred dollars is actually superior and a lot of people will say well I find that hard to believe you know the the more expensive cooler piece of hardware that's gonna be the way to go yeah I mean it does have some uh, a couple pros but one of the immediate cons that I can think of is your hands always in the way with the tablet that you sit on your lap and you look up at the screen, your hand's not in the way. There's a lot of freedom to be, you know, uh, said for that setup. So, you know, keep that in mind, you know, especially if you're on a budget. Don't sit there and tax yourself and hurt yourself, you know, trying to get it and 
whatever if you're not ready so just take your time get the smaller tablets you can do everything uh, I know some pretty amazing artists uh, that use the smaller tablet and they put me to shame with my big fancy Cintiq you know so it's uh it's uh, it's the artist not the uh, not that part of the equipment or tool so okay so now I'm gonna get into the settings that will possibly help you figure out what's going on uh, if you're using a similar setup uh, to me which would be a, a Wacom setup here you've got a the Wacom tablet properties okay and you notice on mine a lot of stuff's disabled uh, I'm kinda clumsy when it comes to the pen buttons even though it's really convenient to have the two buttons there you can change things like you know brush up brush down sizing uh, anything you want you can literally plug in all kinds of different keys modifiers series of clicks you know you can actually make it do uh, you could hit one button and it's called a macro and it can like do a series of things if there's a certain um, series of things that you do quite consecutively then you might want to program a button for that okay so here's the main thing that when I push down on this I'm barely pushing down I'm starting to bear down there's all my pressure right there getting that feel just where you want it and you do that with your tip feel here uh, firmer or softer depending on how you know how slight of hand you might be I think I'm saying that right but how gentle your touch might be or whatever um, so make sure you get that just right to you and play with that and then go back and forth to the software and you'll realize real quick like uh, let me see if it's gonna keep yeah, it's gonna keep throwing that screen off to the side but I'll show you like alright so like light light pressure more bearing all the way down yeah see and that's that's how I uh, would do my line so like light a little more a little more bearing all the way down and the other thing that you control that with do keep in mind that if you want a bigger line variance just up the size of the brush make sure the tip feel is isn't so touchy to where you can still barely hit that line and then slowly work up to that thicker line thicker line obviously the transition wasn't very nice there but I'm just trying to show you that you know yeah, that's a little better and then maybe back off oh, there's a little bump there but you know I don't really do lines like that I actually feather my lines but I just want to show you that that's the other way to get more of a line variance is to up the brush size so now let's uh, get that software back up here okay so uh, double tip click or double click distance I don't use that a whole lot I, don't, I guess I don't double click a whole lot but um let's see uh, t -t 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 tilt sensitivity I don't use much of that um, I think that's more for some of the brushes that map the uh, the tilt or whatever which I don't use a whole lot of um, eraser you can customize the feel of that that seems to be fine at its normal settings calibrate calibrate just make sure that you calibrate to the sc screen to the monitor uh, another big thing to keep in mind with this and uh, that's not going to be on the Cintiq but the uh, smaller tablet is if you're not getting the right um, you know uh, I guess the best way for me to explain it is like this let me show you if I go to draw a circle alright there's my circle well, it's smiley okay if it was hard for me to draw that circle say in my mind I was drawing a circle but I came up with this and every time I tried I, I did that no matter what it just kept forcing that way um, that means that my force proportions are incorrect uh, so the alignment or the scaled proportions from my tablet to the screen are, are not correct so make sure that's not something that's uh, wrong in there I, I had that happen at first when I first started getting into these tablets and uh, my scaled proportions weren't right it's not going to show in here because at least I don't think it will it shouldn't because uh, this is a Cintiq so it doesn't you know you're obviously looking at the screen you're not going to have an issue with that but it is a big issue with your uh, your um, no I guess it is right here yeah I don't see I don't know why because you're drawn right on the screen but at any rate that's what you'll see something like this and it'll usually show like a smaller the smaller board and then a projection line and then the screen up here so look for that if you need it I don't know why in the world it would do that with the Cintiq active area yeah I don't know but at any rate so check that for your settings um, as far as your pressure sensitivity make sure that that's working through here uh, get the you know because here's the thing if you've got it say all the way to soft so I barely touch the screen well, you can't see but I'm barely touching the screen and it goes right to maximum so now if it's set that way for instance and I go over here and I start inking no matter how good I am I can't get a very thin line I'm barely pushing right there like barely pushing and I can't get that thin line 
So obviously my settings are holding me back right there. And as far as Manga Studio, let me put that back because I won't be able to draw that way. Like I said, I like it right about there. Um, seems to work out really well for me. Yeah, see, so you now I can get that thin line I need now. Um, and as far as Manga Studio, I pretty much just use the G Pen that's pre set up that way. Uh, I know that in here you can adjust and create your own brushes. I'm not big on that. I would recommend that you first learn how to use these brushes really well before you start jumping into creating your own and downloading. Reason being is it's kind of a it's it's kind of a uh, open-ended problem, double-edged sword. I don't know, double-edged sword maybe. Like it basically, if you if you immediately jump into like trying to download brushes and changing all your brush settings before you get used to the basic ones, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Like there's a lot of brushes out there, a lot of different things. And the only drawback to adding uh, more tools to your, your toolbox there is if you haven't correctly mastered the ones you started with, then you just created a whole other slew of uh, issues where you're trying to learn multiple things and you're not able to focus on any one. So I would just make sure that you don't, because I did this in the beginning. I just I like had to try all these brushes, all these softwares, and you know I'm pretty much down to um, Manga Studio and Photoshop. Back to those two as my two main softwares that I use now. Um, I like Manga Studio a little bit more for doing my uh, pencil and ink work. And I like Photoshop uh, a little bit more to a lot more for my digital painting. So that's that's what I've come up with. But I've tried so many different softwares um, that you know it kind of got distracting for a while. Even though I love Sketchbook Pro just for drawing. You know, it's like I had to just kind of pick which ones I'm going to focus on here because there's just just a lot of different softwares out there. So before you get into that whole mess of all these custom brushes and all these different things, just kind of focus on the ones it comes with and, and see how much you can uh, get done with those. Then start delving into, you know, I'm going to make custom brushes and I want one just for, I don't know, doing chain mail. I'm sick of drawing chain mail and I'm going to make a custom brush that does that then maybe it makes a little sense. I don't know. So that's just, uh, you know, in my opinion or whatever. So take it as you will. Um, yeah, and the only other thing I can think of that is related to um, the brushes and all that and, you know, the settings for it is, I want to say, do you double click this? To make, hold on. i to find that in there. It's stable, Jason. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. There's there's some there's a way to get to the actual brushes. Is it under window? Tool settings maybe? Yeah, right here. So brush brush shape. Yeah. So you can get in here and kind of modify the brushes a little bit more and, and look at the brushes in more detail. You know, like here's the brush shape. Uh let's see, brush tip, uh spray effect, all these different things. Uh, but for inking, you're not going to need any of these, um, so I don't know, if maybe I shouldn't really even be getting in there. I just want to show you, well, maybe ink right here, combine mode normal, density of paint, no. So, you can get in here and just kind of bounce around, bebop around, find what you're looking for, but, yeah, I would start off in the beginning, and I would just utilize uh, the uh, the stuff that you got at hand with uh, Manga Studio. Um, like I said, 90% of what I do with that G pen seems to work fine for me. Um, I like it a lot. I mean, it's it's pretty versatile. You, know, you just sit there and, like right here, I'm just outlining this character. Uh, I'll find the little highlights I want to uh, leave in before I ink the uh, legs here like a solid black. And I just kind of draw around there. I'm just using a little bit of pressure sensitivity. You know, and the other thing to keep in mind uh, for the gentleman that asked me, you know, like, well, how are you getting your lines like that? I've tried, I can't. If you do check all these settings and you still can't get it, uh, just practice doing this right here. Let me I can just erase it. Um, I'm feathering this line, right? And I'm practicing getting them as close as I can without touching the other line. So I'm feathering it, make sure I don't hit the other line. And this is just a little bit of a... Um, you know, a, a test for yourself. And I don't know why I couldn't get that out. So just kind of test yourself, try these different things. 
Uh, and then you, you do variants of that. So then, you know, you want to practice your cross hatching. You start going like this. Um, and then with with doing this kind of tonal uh, shading and stuff, you want to try all different kinds. You want to say, all right, now I'm going to take these lines. I'm going to slowly break them apart like this. Uh, I want to see what it looks like if I bring some thicker little fat lines this way. And you want to just go crazy with that and practice all different types of textures with the same pen and seeing what kind of line variance variation you can get with that same pen. Um, you got to remember, it gives you a nice thick to thin line, right? So that's like a brush and you know, you can do a ton of different effects just with that. You don't need, um, you know, I mean, maybe you can grab this one cause it looks like a little bit more of a calligraphy style pen. You know, and just practice all these different lines, all these different thicknesses, different ways that you, uh, you change it from uh, closer to further apart, thicker to thinner. Uh, you're basically just trying to texturize your artwork and give it some uh, some depth and some feel. So, so anyways, I'll wrap it up with that. I just wanted to kind of address that uh, question that somebody had. I wanted to make sure I didn't just leave them hanging and them wondering, you know, uh, if I would respond or what. So that's basically it. You know, I'm sorry I didn't um, ink a whole lot here. Um, I guess I should have worked on something like this up here where I could have showed you the thick thin lines more. But this is more about the information and the settings uh, because I believe that's what addresses the nature of that problem. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Got more videos on the way. Also be sure to leave comments and let me know what you'd like to see in the future so I can make sure uh, my channel keeps growing and getting better and becoming more informative and uh, you know something that's uh, valuable to you and something that you know you can tell your friends about and you know if you're into art and want to spread the word kudos to you so thanks very much and uh thanks for watching take care and keep drawing bye bye